Hello class! So, it's me again, Engineer John Ray Pactoranan. And this time, meron na naman kayong panibagong playlist na panonoorin sa Structural Theory. So, ang topic natin ngayon is all about deflection nga, specifically the double integration method. So, bakit? Kasi, um, in the theory of structures, we have actually five methods of determining the deflection of the structure. So, yung una is the double integration method. So, the remaining chapters, we will discuss the geometry method, which consists of the area moment method and the conjugate beam method and the last um, chapter for deflection is all about the energy method so ang topic naman doon ay unit load method at the same time the Casillanos theorem okay so sige to formally start this discussion no so please do not forget to subscribe to my channel as well as hit the notification bell para maging updated ka and as well as like these videos para Uh, kung just in case may natutunan kayo dito So sige no, um, start na tayo class So sige, as I said earlier, I am engineer, Jenry Pactoranan And I am a faculty member of the College of Engineering in Camarines or Polytechnic Colleges So what are the topic outlines? So ano ba yung mga parts nitong discussion natin? So yung una is all about qualitative influence Ah sorry, influence na tuloy, qualitative elastic curve no? So ano bang ibig sabihin ng elastic curve? And ano bang ibig sabihin ng qualitative elastic curve? So yung sumunod, I review of integration. So, supposed to be dapat hindi na nga to kasama class but of course, since the topic is double integration method, um, we will have a short review for integral calculus. In fact, madali naman yung integration dito class. Huwag kang mag-alala. So, next tayo is the elastic beam theory. So, this has no computation. No? Um, I-discuss lang natin yung derivation class ni double integration method using the elastic beam theory and kung ano ba yung limitations. Okay? So next tayo, the most important is yun na nga, the examples regarding the double integration method. Okay? So actually, the remaining three parts ay mga example, kaya lang itong panglima natin class ay discussion regarding sa non-prismatic beam. So ano bang ibig sabihin ng non-prismatic and paano natin gagawan ng analysis for deflection ang mga beams na ganon. And lastly, for number six ay beams with internal pins. Kasi class, yung internal pin ay meron ding effect sa ating structure kung paano siya magde-deflect. Okay? So, yun. So, reference ko um, to give credit is of course the book of Aslam Kasimali um, Structural Analysis SI Edition. So, this is the fourth edition. Pero, um, I use the ano, as well the six edition kasi meron na rin siyang six edition no and another references ay the book of Kenneth M. Litt and others the fundamental of structural analysis no and the book of Russell Hebeler structural analysis ninth edition okay so yan class ang aking mga reference so yun na tapos na tayo for this introduction for the chapter so sige na um let's start so yun sabi mo ready ka nang matuto so ang unang topic natin ngayon is qualitative influence uh, elastic curve. Bakit naiisip ko yung influence? Ah, kasi nga pala last chapter is influence line, no? So, sige na, isipin ko. Qualitative elastic curve. So, ano bang ibig sabihin class na ang qualitative elastic curve in the first place? So, according dito, a qualitative elastic curve is an exaggerated approximate, so yun yung word, no? Exaggerate approximate the form shape of the beam subject to lateral load. So, kumbaga, parang, ano lang siya, prediction lang siya ng magiging um, shape ng beam under um, loading. So, di ba? Um, para mas nakikita natin, um, exaggerated siya. Kasi in reality class, um, the deflection of the beam is just minimal. Dapat nga, almost invisible siya. Di ba? Kasi para magmukha siyang matibay. Eh, sino ba naman ang engineer na magde-design ng ano, no? Ng beam na malaki yung deflection. Delikado yun, class, no? Kakabahan yung occupants doon, okay? Pero dito, for the qualitative elastic curve, in-exaggerate natin para sa ating analysis naman is kita natin siya, okay? So, sabi dito, this diagram helps the designer to make an easier and more accurate analysis of the structures. However, there are some rules to be considered when sketching the qualitative elastic curves. So, parang sa elastic as a influence line natin no may mga rules naman tayo ng pag-sketch ng ano ng elastic curve 
kung sa influence line, may Mueller-Breslau principle tayo. So, dito, um, mga minor set of rules lang naman to class na madali din naman matandaan. Provided na alam nyo nga yung concept ng um, internal loadings of the beam. So, kung ano ba yung konsepto ng positive moment and yung konsepto ng negative moment. Okay? So, ano ba yung unang rule? Sabi dito, when the bending moment is positive, the curve must be concave upward or happy face. So, sabi dyan, when the bending moment is positive, the curve must be concave upward. Yung pangalawa, when the bending moment is negative, the curve must be concave downward. And yung pangatlo, when the bending moment at a point zero, so when the bending moment at a point, pasensya na no, um, edit lang natin yun. Ano, at a point is zero. So, it is the point of inflection or the point of con um, contraflexure of the elastic curve. So, ibig sabihin nun, the point where the beam changes its concavity. So, before ko i-discuss itong pang-apat na rule class, saka yung pang-lima and pang-anib nga. So, of course, um, intindihin muna natin class yung unang tatlo. Okay? So, delete ko lang to. Delete lang natin sila, no? So, ano bang ibig sabihin, class, nung rule number 1, rule number 2, and rule number 3? So, recall lang natin, no, from chapter 4, diba? From chapter 4, pag sinabi nating positive moment, ano bang itsura nun, class? Diba? So, kung meron tayong beam, so, kung meron tayo ditong rigid horizontal beam, so, ang positive moment, class, ang itsura niya sa left end ay pag ganito. And yung itsura niya sa right end ay pag ganito, di ba? So, ganyan siya. Might as well, um, for the negative moment naman, lagay natin um, negative moment. So, ano ba yung orientation ng negative moment? Ang mangyayari, ganito yung kanyang ano, left and right. Okay, so diba, ganito ang positive moment and ganito class ang negative moment. So, bakit nasabi class na kapag positive moment, happy face, tapos pag negative moment is sad face? So, ganito kasi yon class. Um, imagine ninyo, um, due to this moment, diba, due to this end moments, ang tendency nitong positive moment class ay mag i smile Diba? So, yun. Diba? Yun yung tendency ng ating beam. So, wait lang ha. Medyo nag -e error kasi itong PowerPoint. Ayan. So, pasasayahin niya ang beam natin. Sana all may nagpapasaya. Kaya lang, sa negative moment, ang gagawin niya, palulungkutin niya yung ating end moment. Diba? So, ganun class ang mangyayari under negative moment. So ganun. Um ito ah happy ah ito sad. Kaya nga siya kung babalikan niyo when the bending moment is positive the curve must be concave upward. So ganito class ang ibig sabihin ni concave upward while kapag negative it is concave downward. So sabihin mo na lang I'm happy and I'm sad. Ayan, no? So, happy and sad lang. Parang angry to, no? Oh, but okay na yan. Happy and sad lang. Okay? So, yung pangatlong rule class, no? When the bending moment at a point is zero, it is the point of inflection or contraflexure of the elastic curve. So, pag sinabi natin, class, na point of inflection, um, inflection ang ibig sabihin nun, yun yung point kung saan nagbago yung concavity class ng straa ng elastic curve. Halimbawa, may moment diagram tayo, class, no? So, drawing lang muna ako ng moment diagram. And it, type. O, oh, bahala na kung pinaano. Tapos, um, ganito yung itsura class ni moment diagram. So, bahala na kung paano yan na-derive. Basta, um, ayan yung moment diagram niya. Tapos, um, ito yung structure natin. Um, ito yung point of inflection, no? So, sabihin na natin, ito yung structure natin. So, this region class um, is positive moment, while this region is negative moment. So, ibig sabihin, simula dito class, happy face siya, and pagdating dito is sad face. So, when we say na point of zero moment class, automatic, this is the point of inflection. So, therefore... Ibig sabihin, dito nga magbabago ng itsura yung elastic curve. From happy face, magiging sad face. Or, 
vice versa. Okay? So, ang mangyayari, halimbawa, dito siya, happy face, tapos, sad face. Okay? So, pwedeng ganito. So, tawagin natin yan na point of inflection. Hindi yan nangangahulugan na wala yung deflection. May deflection pa rin, class, ang point of inflection. Kaya lang, ang point dito is, from happy, naging sad siya. So, yun yung tinatawag natin na point of inflection or point of contraflexure. Tandaan nyo na lang siguro, class, yung word na contraflexure kasi ibig sabihin, dun nagsimula kumontra yung flexure ng ating elastic curve. Okay? So, yun yung ibig sabihin nun, class. So, next tayo. Um, for the fourth one, no deflection must be drawn in fixed and simple support. So, of course, since support sila, dapat walang deflection class na mangyari doon. So, yung panglima, the slope of the elastic curve at fixed support must be zero. And yung panganim, a sudden change in the behavior of the curve must happen at the location of internal pin. So, to further understand this rules class, no, subukan natin um, mag-solve ng mga illustrative examples. So, mag sketch lang naman tayo class ng um, qualitative elastic curve. No? So, there is no need for computation here. So, yung una, um, sige, no, ano ba yung example? So, sketch the qualitative elastic curve of the beam shown below. So, this is simply supported beam with uniform load. So, para ma-sketch mo siya class accurately, dapat meron ka ng moment diagram nito. Pero of course, um, before I started to record this one, I already sketched the moment diagram of the beam. Okay, no? So, ganun lang naman ang mangyayari dito class. No? So, you may prove to yourself na tama naman class yung mga moment diagram na yan. So, di ba ganun lang naman talagang itsura niyan. So, based dito, um, since all throughout the span class, um, positive yung area, ibig sabihin, happy face siya, di ba? Kapag positive yung moment, ibig sabihin, happy face. And dapat nga, walang deflection dito sa ating supports. So, kapag drinawing mo lang yung elastic curve in an exaggerated manner, pag ganito siya. Okay? So, ito na class yung ating um, elastic curve. So, ganun lang naman class ang meaning niya, no? So, since ano, wala siyang ano, wala siyang negative moment, therefore, wala siyang sad portion. Lahat lang siya concave upward at the same time, dapat nga walang deflection sa support. Okay? So, dapat ganito yung elastic curve nyo. So, for example number 2, um, nandito lang siya. So, sketch the qualitative elastic curve of the beam shown below. So, this time, this is a cantilever beam, no? So, for the case of cantilever beam, um, kung maalala nyo, sinagutan na rin natin to sa chapter 2. However, um, kung hindi mo pa napapanood, um, okay lang kasi I already sketched na nga the moment diagram. You may check it by yourself na lang, class, kung ano yung magiging moment diagram niya. Okay, pero ito, sinisigurado ko sa inyo, tama siya. So, dito, wala naman siyang positive moment class. Lahat siya negative moment, di ba? Simula dito sa support hanggang dito sa 5 meters from the support, di ba? Sorry, uh, may mali lang ako ditong measurement. 2 meters lang dapat yan. So, therefore, um, pag in-sketch natin yan, ang mangyayari, since this is class a fixed support, bukod sa dapat walang deflection dito, at the same time, dapat din class, no? Na yung slope ay zero. So, parang... Um, yan yung vertex So uh, Magiging drawing nyo pa ganito Okay, so this is the elastic curve Eh sir, paano naman na dito? Since wala na siyang moment So usually, pag walang moment Sketch mo na lang siya class as straight line Diretso na lang siya So okay na to We can consider this class as the elastic curve Basta tingnan mo lang siya Dapat walang deflection sa mismong support At the same time um, Imagine ninyong zero yung slope no? Yung kumbaga parang ang tangent dito ay horizontal So ang point ko nga lang dito class Is dapat may sketch lang muna natin Yung qualitative influe ah, Sorry, qualitative elastic curve nga Okay so, next tayo, um, sketch the qualitative elastic curve of the beam shown below. So, this is a double overhang beam. Tapos, um, ito yung itsura ng shear diagram and ito yung itsura ng moment diagram. So, kung papansin nyo, class, sad face siya, pero dapat nga walang deflection dito sa support. So, syempre, since negative moment, sad face, most likely, ang magiging itsura niyan, class, is pa ganito. No? Pag ganyan yan, class. And since dito nga, walang moment sa part na to, 
As I said, gawin mo na lang yan as straight line. Okay na rin yan. So, pag ganito ang magiging elastic curve. Kasi nga, ba diba, dapat walang deflection sa mga supports. So, connected siya. Well, totoo ba? Mangyayari kaya na ganito yung deflection niya. So, pwede bang ganito yung elastic curve? Kasi dito pa sad face siya. Yes, class. Kasi imagine niyo na lang, itong 85 kilo newton, di ba? Parang imagine niyo, um, ito ay isang steel bar na 10 meters yung length. Tapos may support lang dyan. Di ba? Um, halimbawa, itong ball pen. Tapos ito yung mga dalawang support. Pag pinush mo ito sa gilid, class, parang ang tendency, yung nasa span, is parang tumataas siya instead na bumababa. So, this is a matter of imagination. Pero tama to class. Kasi yun yung sinasabi ni moment diagram eh. Dapat maging sad siya. At the same time, by imagination nga, pag ipinush ko itong 85 kilo newton, parang ang tendency, no? Imagine nyo na lang, pag pinush ko itong 85 kilo newton, itong portion na ito babagsak. Tapos, yung bahagi yun is aangat. Tapos gaganito. So, di ba parang ganyan yung magiging elastic curve niya? So, tingnan natin kung nag-reflect siya dyan. So, ayan. Tama siya. So, this is the elastic curve for this beam, no? So, I hope, no, nag-gets nyo siya. So, lastly, um, sa pang-apat tayo, um, it has an internal pin kasi gusto kong ipakita kung paano yung magiging effect ni internal pin. So, kung mapapansin nyo, simula dito, um, yung pang-apat class, ito lang naman yung problem niya. By the way, this is the third one. And yung pang-apat is nandito siya. I already sketched the shear and moment diagram of this one para nga hindi na tayo matagalan sa discussion. Kasi nga, ang purpose lang naman itong topic na to is for you to sketch the qualitative elastic curve nga. So, balik tayo dito. Kung mapapansin nyo, we have um, an internal pin here. So, based sa drawing, the point B is an internal pin. At the same time, simula sa point na to, simula sa ano, left end hanggang sa internal pin, positive yung moment. So, it means dyan sa portion na yan, itong portion na to, happy dapat dito. However, for this portion class, yung nasa kanang bahagi, simula sa internal pin hanggang sa fixed support, negative class ang moment. So, paano natin yun magagawa ng solution? So, although this is the point of contraflexure class, kasi nga, sabi natin, the point of zero moment is the point of contraflexure, but since there is an internal pin, sa rule number 6 natin, dapat may sudden change. Parang may bigla ang pagbabago sa elastic curve. So, the elastic curve must be um, not perfectly curved. So, halimbawa, dito, for the first one, this must be um, this must be um, happy face, di ba? So, ang itsura ng happy face, malamang dapat walang deflection doon sa support, is pag ganito dapat siya. Okay? So, ganyan yan. However, simula dito sa internal pin hanggang sa rigid support, naging negative moment siya. So, dapat maging sad face yan. Okay, no? So, yan. Yun yung magiging itsura. Magiging sad face siya. And therefore, meron tayo ditong internal pin. So, yun na nga ang gusto kong i-point out. The internal pin causes the elastic curve to change suddenly. Parang nabali class yung elastic curve due to the internal pin. And that is common. Kasi nga, yun yung, yun yung purpose ng internal pin. Talagang mababali yan. So, ganito ang mangyayari sa kanyang elastic curve. So, I hope mo, no, um, because of these four examples, nag-gets nyo class yung konsepto ng qualitative elastic curve. So, the next lesson um, will be, of course, the review of integration. So, i-end ko na itong lecture video na to. And I hope, no, um, mapanood nyo pa yung ating mga future discussions regarding sa double integration method. So, and I hope as well nga na may natutunan kayo dito. So, bye-bye!